as someone said kids don't take up sport unless you are a bunch of australian women it was a game of centimeters a stack bat and acrobatic save on the boundary line that's all separated the two teams welcome to the knockout episode of aditya birla sun life mutual fund presents the outside view didi ekdam pro gift hai pehen lo stencil jaise use kar lo ya fir cookie cutter bana lo pro nahi bro असली प्रो तो प्रो इन्वेस्टिंग है जो दे सकता है फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी बैलेंस और लॉन्ग टर्म रिटर्न्स का एडवांटेज इंट्रोड्यूसिंग प्रो इन्वेस्टिंग म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क्स रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली इट वाज अ फर्स्ट सेमी फाइनल एट न्यू लैंड्स इन केप टाउन where india took on australia after winning the toss australia looked listless in the batting at the same time india looked listless in the fielding in the first 10 overs australia scored only 69 but eventually ended up 172 on the board with some powerful shots from meg lanning as well as ash gardner but it was it all started with beth mooney doing her thing on india's part india dropped beth mooney on the boundary their spinners bowled well in patches but eventually they considered 172 runs and they had to have that record chase to win a semi final no match the chase didn't go according to plans for india it was 28 for 3 at one stage with smriti madan and shafali varma departing early but an enterprising partnership from jemi mar rodrix and harman preet kaur took india closer and eventually it was reduced to 13 and of last 30 balls but india eventually couldn't get home it was a familiar tale of heartbreaks for india it's the seventh final for australia as they look for their record another record six title the match summary doesn't describe how the match unfolded it all started with harman's absence or presence in the match she was down with fever she visited the hospital to get tablets but she was ready for the match once it started she was not just ready she was determined to give that knockout punch to the australians but in the end it was in 2007 it was more like the 2022 cwg final what went wrong for india they started with multiple drop catches then ground fielding wasn't also great and in the end 172 proved enough for australia when harman joined jemi mar rodrix in the middle they were conscious of minimizing that dot ball percentage and making sure that the power play count they did make that power play count and then went on to score at a faster pace jemi mar played some eye catching shots harman matched her as well they did run well between the wicket but eventually As long as Harman was there, India had hope. Unfortunately, I run out where her bat was stuck at the crease. Still, it was doable with 13 runs of 13 needed, but the lower batters couldn't get enough boundaries, and India eventually fell five runs short. What did Australia do right? They fielded better, even though Al Alisa Healy dropped a catch of Harman. It didn't cost them the match. Their ground fielding was brilliant, with Ellis Perry doing that. acrobatic save on the boundary ashley garner was brilliant with the ball as well she got her familiar opponent smriti mandana once again eventually it came down to 16 of the last over and ashley garner defended that as well after scoring only 16 runs in the first 10 overs meg it was meg lanning and ashley garner who helped australia go go to that 172 run mark with 18 runs coming off the last over bowled by renuga singh tagore lanning started scratchly but eventually caught up with the strike rate they ended up on 14 and of 34 balls when jemima and harman were waiting it reminded them of the cwg final and eventually the outcome also ended up like that so similar was for india and similar fate for australia now let's see who will join australia in the final with england and south africa taking on in the second semi final that's it on aditya villa sun life mutual fund presents the outside view